Hi, I reviewed this TinySA Ultra Spectrum Analyzer a few weeks ago, and was quite impressed by the capabilities of this tiny device, especially at the price point of just around $150. In this video, we'll take a look at how to add a tracking generator to this TinySA Ultra, as a few of you had asked me whether or not this can be done. But before getting into the details, let's talk about why you may need a tracking generator and take a quick look at the principle of operations behind one. If you are doing RF work, sooner than later you will run into the task of needing to design or characterize a filter or an antenna. Let's take characterizing a filter for example. One way to do it is to input a sweep signal and observe the response amplitude change on the spectral analyzer. So here is a quick look at how this is done here. Here we have an RF source that is doing the sweeping here, and we have a device under test. The output signal is put into the spectral analyzer. As you can see here, spectral analyzer is also doing the sweep. So this method does work, but it has a key shortcoming. You see the sweep signal input is independent from the spectral analyzer, and the spectral analyzer does its own sweep as well. So it depends on the sweep speed of these different sources. It could take quite a few cycles in order to cover the entire spectrum we are interested in. As you can see here, each sweep from the assay may only cover partial of the frequency that we are sweeping from the RF source. And this is typically accomplished by using the max hold feature of the trace on a spectrum analyzer. Obviously, it takes a long time to capture the entire trace. That could be a problem if the filter characteristics are dynamic in nature. And let me quickly demonstrate how to use this technique to measure the frequency response of a filter. Here we have a simple LC filter. Its resonant frequency is at around 340 megahertz. And I have set up a sweep between 300 and 400 megahertz. You can see that is on this tiny SA output. The center frequency is 350 megahertz with a frequency span of 50 megahertz. And now it's doing the sweeping. So let's take a look at what is captured on the spectral analyzer. So now you can see we're sweeping from left to right at about uh, two seconds per sweep. And obviously you can already kind of see the shape of the filter, but of course you can't really see it. So in order to persist, we have to press the max hold. And as I mentioned earlier, it will take quite a few cycles for the picture to eventually smooth out. So this brings us to why it would be advantageous to use a tracking generator. A tracking generator, as its name implies, tracks the frequency of the spectral analyzer's sweeping oscillator. Typically, that's the first elbow, so that the tracking generator's frequency output matches the center frequency of the bandpass filter in the spectral analyzer's IF stage. And what that means is, as a result, the two frequencies we talked about earlier are now in sync. You can see here, because the input into the device under test is essentially from the tracking generator, which tracks the SA's sweeping signal. So therefore, these two signals are now in sync. So at any given moment, the spectral analyzer sees the same frequency input as what it is currently sweeping at. So it only takes one sweep to cover the entire frequency range of interest. Now you understand why we need a tracking generator. Now let's see how we can make one. Well, the basic principle behind the tracking generator is rather simple. The tracking signal can be obtained by subtracting the IF frequency from the LO using a mixer. As you can see in the diagram I have here, let's first ignore that 977 megahertz number, but this is the IF frequency we talked about earlier, and it's subtracted from the first LO. So now for simplicity, let's say if the spectral analyzer is sweeping between 0 and 10 megahertz, the first LO would be sweeping between 977 and 987 megahertz. But at any given moment, what the spectral analyzer sees is the synchronized frequency signal between 0 and 10 megahertz, as we have subtracted that 977 megahertz IF from the input. So the input into the device under test is swept between 0 and 10 megahertz, which is in sync with the spectral analyzer's sweep. And that is essentially a tracking generator. Now let's talk about that 977 megahertz number I put on the diagram. 
according to TinySA's documentation, the IF should be 980 megahertz, and that is synthesized from the SI4468 synthesizer. But if you do the measurement yourself, you will see that this number is actually a little bit off and does have a little bit of variation depending on the center frequency of the spectral analyzer. And we'll see that in just a little bit. Because the IF filter is very narrow, you really have to ensure that the frequency matches exactly. Otherwise, you will be outside of the IF band and get a very poor response. So let's take a look at the LO signal itself on my HP 8566B spectral analyzer. With the tiny SA Ultra, you can enable the LO output. Let's take a look at that. So we can go to config, more. You can see we have this LO output. Actually, let me currently keep it disabled because I do want to show you the LO leakage on the spectrum analyzer as well. So let's not enable that. But uh, what I do want to do is I want to come here to set the sweep. Let's go back to uh, set a sweep to zero span. So let's set it at 100 megahertz zero span so that the LO would be fixed without moving. And uh, let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer right now. So remember, right now on the Tiny SA Ultra, we have the LO turned off, and you do see this peak here. So let's do some measurement to see what exactly that peak is at. So it's at, the, by the look of it, minus 50 dBm. Because of the LO currently is turned off, that is actually the LO leak through that we are measuring. That is sitting at minus 50 dBm. So now let me enable the LO. And you will see that the signal is much stronger now. It's sitting at roughly minus 10 dBm. And let me just reduce the resolution bandwidth so we can have a more accurate measurement here. So let's do 30 kilohertz and we do a peak search. So you can see the LO currently is sitting at 1.077 gigahertz. And because of TinySA Ultra currently is doing a zero span at 100 megahertz, so you can calculate that the IF currently is 1.077 minus 100 is 977 megahertz. There are a couple of interesting things I discovered while measuring the LO. The first is that the measured IF appear to be at around 977 megahertz and 978 megahertz range, rather than the specified 980 megahertz. And the slight variation is typical for these RF synthesizers. Also, there appears to be a switchover of the LO between 2.31 and 2.32 gigahertz. Below 2.31 gigahertz, the LO frequency is higher than SA's center frequency, but afterwards, it is lower. So let me demonstrate that here as well. So now on the Tiny SA Ultra, I have set it to 2.31 gigahertz zero span. And let's take a look at what is on the special analyzer. I have already set it up. Not sure if you can read this, but uh, the marker currently is sitting at 3.288 gigahertz. And if you recall, the Tiny SA Ultra currently is sitting at 2.31 GHz, which means the LO is 977 MHz above. So now let me change the Tiny SA Ultra's output to be 2.32 GHz instead of 2.31. So let me do that. 2.32 GHz. And you notice that uh, the trace on the spectral analyzer is gone. And it should have been at uh, the other end because we have a 100 megahertz frequency span, but we don't see that anymore. And that's because the LO right now, instead of being above the zero span frequency, now it's actually folded under the zero span frequency. So let's uh, try to find it. And if we do our calculation, it would be around 1.342 gigahertz. So let's find that frequency. Let's do center frequency, 1.342 gigahertz. And bingo, we can see that if we do the peak search, the LO is actually currently sitting at 1.343 gigahertz. And remember, now we are actually sweeping at uh, 2.32 gigahertz, doing a zero span, as you can see there. So this behavior is actually not documented anywhere on TinySA's website. 
Also, you notice that the LO level is currently at minus 10 dBm thereabout, which will drop significantly after 5 GHz or so. So this will affect tracking generator's dynamic range. And you can see right now we're sitting at the highest extreme. Right now the Tiny SA is doing a 12 GHz zero span, as you can see on the Tiny SA display here. And the LO currently is sitting at 11.022 GHz, so still has that 978 MHz relationship, but the amplitude is significantly reduced. Then as you can see, the output level of the LO is not uniform. Obviously, it started rolling off as the frequency increases. So because of this, we also don't have a mechanism to level the output. You will have to take that into consideration as well when doing your measurements. All right, now it's time for us to put everything together and take a look. And just as a refresher, I'm going to put the diagram we looked at earlier here so we can compare. With this diagram here as a reference, let's take a look at the actual setup. So if you recall, we have the mixer's LO connected with the first LO output from the spectral analyzer, and let's take a look at here. So this is our mixer, and this port is LO. So you can see with this SMA cable, we connect it to the CAL port, and this port is multiplexed as the LO output. Now let's take a look at the IF part. The IF is this port, and now we're just connected directly back to the input of the spectral analyzer, so we should get a straight line when we turn on the RF. But uh, in general, we would put a device under test between this port and the input of the spectral analyzer. And finally, we have a signal coming in from the RF port, which it represents the IF frequency. So this frequency is 977 MHz. On the mixer, you see that we have a RF port connected via this SMA cable, and this one goes to the HP8642B back there. Currently, I have it set up to output a 977 MHz signal, but RF currently is turned off. So let me turn on the RF and let's observe what happens on the spectral analyzer here. So I'm going to turn on the RF. So if everything goes right, we should see a flat line. And we do, but uh, it appears the scale somehow is set incorrectly. So let me remove the sheet. You can see here, let me zoom in. And it appears that all of a sudden we are referencing here is minus 50, minus 30 dBm, and here is 50 dBm. So the scale doesn't look right. So let me adjust the scale a little bit and uh, we'll take another look. All right, it took me a little bit to find the level setting. So anyway, so let me just show you here. To set the level, you come in here and uh, we have this level. You set the reference level. So originally it was auto set, so I simply just change it to manual and set 0 dBm as my top line here. So you can see now, instead of 50, this is 0 dBm. So the whole graph gets shifted upwards. Now we can actually see the line in the middle. So this actually looks uh, flat enough, as I mentioned earlier. We don't have a way to readjust this reference level anyway. So it's good that currently everything is flat. So now let's... Uh, put in that filter and take a look here. And look at that. That is a tracking generator. And indeed, you can see the characteristic of the filter here. So let's uh, move the cursor. And you can see that the center frequency is sitting at 339.4 megahertz. And that is very neat. Now, a quick comment on the mixer I'm using here. The mixer I have here is not ideal. It's meant for a frequency range between 2.3 gigahertz to 8 gigahertz. So the IF center frequency now is sitting at 977 megahertz, which is definitely outside the operating range of this particular mixer. But for our demonstration purpose, it should be sufficient and it will just not work as well. 
Now I do have a couple of comments here. Because the LO is sitting at minus 10 dBm, we don't get enough dynamic range to begin with. And this is compounded by the fact that the mixer we're using is a level 7 mixer. So that ideally the LO should be 7 dBm, but uh, we only have a minus 10 dBm LO. So that incurs additional loss in the mixing. That gives you this very weak signal to begin with on the spectral analyzer. Also from the 8642B, the signal is at 0 dBm, and you need to be careful because the maximum input to this RF port is going to be limited by 10 dBm. Of course, there's going to be some loss in the mixer, but do need to pay attention to that maximum RF input power because otherwise you could potentially damage your tiny SA. So anyway, this result is actually not bad at all. And just to verify, here is the same filter that we are measuring on this light VNA. And you can see that the center frequency also is at 339 MHz. So the conclusion here is that you definitely can make a tracking generator with an external mixer and use it in conjunction with the tiny SA Ultra. And because the IF remains at 977 MHz when sweeping up to 12 GHz, you could in theory use the tracking generator up to 12 GHz without requiring any harmonic mixing. Of course, the main limiting factor is unfortunately the LO signal level. At minus 10 dBm, it really doesn't give you much dynamic range. And at higher frequencies, this decreases even further. Also, the LO isolation is not that great either. As you saw earlier, we had an LO leak through of minus 50 dBm or so, when the LO output is actually off. So all these factors affect your available dynamic range of the tracking generator. But considering how cheap the tiny SA is, this performance level remains very impressive. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and learned something new. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, share the video, and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. I will catch up with you next time.